Hello friends, this video on sources of energy part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us start with conventional sources of energy. So what are conventional sources of energy? As I mentioned, the sources of energy which have been used since a long time. I mean that is what you can, uh, I mean that is the definition as its name suggests. Conventional means traditional. So the sources which are being used since a long time. Conventional sources of energy are generally non-renewable. Now, what is this non-renewable? Non-renewable, as the name again says, what? Renew. What is renew? Renew means, some, for example, you have your driving license, right? It gets expired. So there is an option that you can get it renewed. That means your driving license will become active once again. Suppose again uh, it, it got expired. So again it can, you can renew it. So again it will become active. So the word renew means something which can be used again and again. Right? So conventional sources are non-renewable. That means once you have used them, you cannot use it again. For example, examples of conventional sources is one of the good examples is coal. Now, once you burn coal, you get a lot of heat energy, but the coal that you have burned, burnt, that is gone. You cannot recycle it or you cannot reuse it, right? So that means, let us suppose you have 1 kg coal with you. So now, if you burnt 500 grams of coal to get some amount of heat energy, you burnt it. But those 500 grams are gone forever. You cannot reuse it. So that means whatever amount of that coal you have, so that is that is like all you have. You cannot renew it. So that means there is a chance that in future, in near or far future, there can be a possibility that you do not have any further stock for the source of energy. Right? So this, this is one of the these advantages as well, that it is non-renewable. But most of the conventional sources of energy are non-renewable. So let us look at some of the examples of conventional sources of energy. The first one being coal, petroleum and natural gas, hydropower plant that is also a conventional source of energy. I mean it has been a traditional method of generation of electricity. Similarly the thermal power plant, the wind energy, these are some of the conventional sources of energy. Now as I mentioned in the previous slides that Generally, these sources of energy are non-renewable. But that doesn't mean that all conventional sources of energy are non-renewable. Most of them are non-renewable, but some of them are renewable as well. Right? So now let us look at each of these sources of energy in detail one by one. So let us start with fossil fuels. So what are fossil fuels? Now if you look at these examples, now the first two, that is coal, petroleum and natural gas, they are together known as fossil fuels. So we will first discuss about fossil fuels, that what are fossil fuels, how were they formed and how are they a good source of energy. So fossil fuels are formed by natural process like decomposition of dead plants and animals. So and that is why they were known as fossil fuels. The term fossil came from... Uh, this logic that since they were formed by decomposition of dead plants and animals, so they were known as fossils because they, for, they were formed from the remains of plants and animals. So what are the fossil examples of fossil fuels? As I mentioned, coal, petroleum and natural gas. These, they, these three fall under the category of fossil fuels. So now, I mean, I don't need to explain you. I mean, I think most of you would have seen coal. You are also aware of natural gas and you are also aware of petroleum. So these are some certain things which are common to your day-to-day -day life, right? So these are fossil fuels. Now we will see how exactly were the fossil fuels formed. These fossil fuels were formed during the Carboniferous period. That is a period somewhere some several million years ago from now. So these fossil fuels were formed during the Carboniferous period. So why this period was known as it was it was something around the um, dinosaur period. So you can imagine I am talking about I mean such an old period. So it was that long back when the fossil fuels were actually formed. 
Now let us see how were the fossil fuels formed. Well, during the Carboniferous period, most of the areas were covered by trees, leafy plants, ferns, swamps and things like that. So everywhere you could see more of algae, plants, greenery all around. So even the oceans were all covered with the green plant-like structures like algae and all. Okay, so that is how it was during that period, right? Now, what happened as those plants or ferns or algae or whatever it is or small sea animals, as everything died, so these dead plants sank to the bottom of the oceans, right? Now, as they sank to the bottom of the oceans, in due course of time, they got covered with rocks, sand, clay and all those stuff. And in due course of time, they, they, I mean, more and more rocks were gathered, I mean, got deposited upon them. As a result, these remains of dead plants and animals, they got squeezed under very high temperature and pressure, they formed fossil fuels. Now, this entire process, I mean, it was not uh, a very small process or it, it, this did not happen very quickly. It took a long period of time. I mean, it almost took over hundreds and thousands of years for these uh, remains of dead plants and animals to decompose and then form any of these fossil fuels. So, I mean, this is, this is how this was the basic process for the formation of coal, petroleum or natural gas. So, let me review once again. So, what happened? In the Carboniferous period, we had more of trees, plants, ferns and swamps. So as these things died, they sank to the bottom of the oceans. So they gradually, they formed a layer of spongy material. I mean, these dead remains, gradually they formed some spongy kind of material. They got covered with sand and clay. Over several years, they formed rocks, began to press down. They got squeezed and under high temperature and pressure over a period of several years, they finally formed coal, oil or natural gas. Now, we will anyways talk about, in, uh, about coal, natural gas and petroleum in detail individually. So, but for now, you should know how uh, the fossil fuels formed and this was the process. The major constituent of fossil fuels was Carbon, I mean, whether it is coal, petroleum or natural gas, one of the major constituent or the main constituent is carbon. And it is because of the presence of this carbon, these fossil fuels are used as a source of energy because when carbon burns, a lot of energy is produced. So because of the presence of carbon and due to this, since everything, all trees, plants and leaves, swamps, everything, since everything had carbon, that is why that period was known as the Carboniferous period. So this Carboniferous term also came from carbon. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.